Before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians. Ephesians 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him 
the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality, and power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Ephesians 2 and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others." But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father." Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. The pricks and bricks across the globe are echoing their assuredness in the efficacy and power of the Almighty God through the God's chosen vessel, Dr. W.F. Kumuyi. No matter what your condition is, mercy is coming to you. The rings and meeting slabs are strong enough to accommodate and remove the suffering devastation, sickness, poverty, and clogs of sin from the life of whosoever will. If you say, I want forgiveness, he will not say no, because already he is the merciful God. This stable, known as the Global Crusade with Kumui GCK, is pitching a gospel tabernacle for a divine encounter in an African country known for scenic sight. Zambia. There are certain rooms you need to be in at certain times to have certain encounters. The door of Zambia is open to divine encounter with the God of all miracles. Starting from Thursday 21st to Tuesday 26th September 2023 at 1600 RGMT daily 
taking place at the National Hero Stadium, Zambia. Miracle will land at your doorstep. Ministers, church workers, and professionals will be shown exceeding limits in the ministry on 22nd, 25th, and 26th September at Molungushi International Conference Center, Zambia, at 0600 R GMT. Teenagers, campus students, call members, and young adults will be treated to an eye-opening encounter to awaken the sleeping giants in Den at the National Heroes Stadium, Zambia, on Saturday, 23rd, September 2023, at 0600R GMT. The program shall be transmitted live on satellite, radio, and television. And all those who are online, I want to tell you that the miracle power will come from the Alpha location here and get to you right there. The September edition will feature inspirational songs from choirs across the globe Why the guest music minister Jonathan Lee will lead worship and praise to the almighty God It is a moment of divine encounter GCK The gospel to every creature
keep us one in thy love doing not but what you are proved we are blessed to be thine closely bound in thy love divine keep us Oh. 
we now bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world. Je 
sagesse au Seigneur, s'il te plaît, suis mes larmes. Oh oui. Plus haut dans son amour, plus haut dans sa grâce, plus haut dans sa sagesse, plus haut chaque jour, plus haut dans sa service. where it all started. In the Bible, those who came to a place like this, they pleaded and they begged that they must take something home. It has never changed and will never change. The Lord will do for us what he intends to do. As we're studying the word, taking the word, believe the word, 
and purposefully live in the world. It's like the air you breathe. It comes once every week and it's just for you. It's the Monday Bible study where the undiluted word of God is served precept by precept and line upon line. Thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, what is the good way? And walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But the said, will not walk therein. You say you are born again. You say you are a child of God. You say you are connected to Christ. You say you are converted. You say you are on your way to heaven. All right now, as for the old way, as for the old path. Wherever you are, online or physical, every Monday presents a personal gift for you, the expository word of God. Simple, full, and free. This is the Spirit of God bearing witness in your heart that the grace of God has come to you. And that grace that appeared to you brought salvation. And it teaches you to deny all ungodliness and worldly laws. And it's helping you, the grace of God helping you to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Monday Bible Study with Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui. 1800 hours GMT, the teacher of the word, gifted by heaven, with a fivefold ministry, God's servant, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi, awaits you. Join us. Don't forget, it's every Monday, and it's specially just for you. I welcome everyone to the worship service today. Very important. The Lord wants to give us real revelation. And I pray that every captivity in your life, the Lord will cancel and break, smash everything, crush everything in Jesus' name. And those online, I want you to position yourself as if you in particular, you are the one I'm speaking to today. And as we connect, you look at me, I look at you, and then we look at the world together. Your life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today. We thank you because you have called us. Come unto me, you have said, O ye that claim on a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'm asking, Lord, you grant rest to everyone, restoration to everyone, emancipation to everyone, and you grant total solution to everyone, and transformation to every life, every situation in Jesus' name. Bless your people today. Open our eyes to see what bondage, what captivity has been there and roll everything away from every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the victorious church said, God bless you, you can sit down. Today we are coming to look at some of the Psalms from Psalm 126 all through to Psalm 133. We're looking at Psalm 126, I'm reading from verse 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And then in verse 6, it tells us, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his chiefs with him. And then in Psalm 133, we're reading from verse 1. It says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Verse 3, it says in verse 3, As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord, here the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Blessings upon your life. Blessings upon your family. And blessings upon 
your spiritual uh, congregation in Jesus name as we look at the Psalms today we're talking about the fruitfulness of faithful kingdom citizens it talks about Zion and Zion was the place of God's habitation the domain of God's power and for us today is the kingdom of God the kingdom of heaven the Zion of the people of God and were citizens of that kingdom and as we remain faithful to the Lord he will make us fruitful and it will make you fruitful in Jesus name now we're talking about this under three perspectives number one the freedom of Zion's sons from captivity the freedom the deliverance the release the restoration redemption of Zion's sons from captivity I come to number two the faithfulness of zealous saints for his commission he calls us we're saints we're sowers we're soul winners and he calls us to fulfill the great commission the faithfulness of zealous saints for his commission number three is the fruitfulness you will be fruitful I will be fruitful the fruitfulness of zestful sowers without conflict or contention zestful excited people who are perfect in what they're doing and we're sowers of the seed we're soul winners and we're taking the seed of the word of God and we're so into the hearts of people and we're zestful about it, delighted about it, excited about it and we do it with joy and with uh, some kind of cheerfulness and as we sow, there's no conflict and there is no contention, we're united together, we're one, one was the Christ who gave us the commission one with the gospel that we're preaching and one with other soul winners united together and we're going to bear fruit in Jesus name let's come to number one number one freedom from for Zion's sons from uh, captivity and let's go to Psalm 126 I'm reading from verse 1 it says when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion we were like them the dream then in verse 2 it tells us then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue was singing then said they among the heathen the Lord has done great things for them in verse 3 it says the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad and then in verse 4 turn again our captivity turn again our captivity O Lord as the streams of the south you notice in verse 1 the word captivity you notice in verse 4 the word captivity at this point one we're talking about the freedom of the children of God the freedom of the citizens of the kingdom the freedom of the sons and daughters of Zion from uh, captivity I need to let you know what the Lord talks about when he says captivity it can be applied to one person it can be applied to a family it can be applied to the church it can be applied to the nation it can be applied to the whole world the word captivity number one there's captivity to the task master that's what the children of Israel experienced when they were in Egypt number two there is captivity to the tormentors tormentors you see there are people they're given to be trained by a man either in mechanical work or in trade or whatever and they're supposed to be their mentors to train them and to develop them and to groom them so that maybe they can become a businessman or they can become a professional man and instead of the mentor and the trainer developing them 
he torments them. The mentors then become tormentors. Number three, there is the thorn in the flesh. The thorn in the flesh. That's what Paul the Apostle said, Satan buffeted me over and over. Satan wanted to bring him into captivity by that thorn in the flesh. There are people that have thorns in the flesh and because of that they are held down and the thorn is buffeting them and it's like, what am I going to do? Number one, the taskmaster's captivity. Number two, the tormentor's captivity. Number three, the thorn in the flesh captivity. Then there is Satan. There are people that Satan just will hold down and he says, you are going nowhere. And because of that captivity of Satan, they cannot do all the things they envision to do, all the places they wanted to go. There are people today that have the captivity of sin. The Lord Jesus said, oh, of this woman that Satan has bound with this sickness, with the spirit of infirmity, that is captivity. And then there are other people, they are bound by sin. The things I wanted to do, I could not do. And then it's not just me now, it is sin that dwelleth in me. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me out of the body of this death? There is captivity to evil spirit. The spirit of infirmity has bound this woman all these 18 years. And then Jesus, the word of God says that Jesus Christ was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. Sickness is of the devil. And then God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends and the Lord healed him and then gave him twice as much as he had before. There's a captivity of sickness. There's a captivity of self that the person like Absalom self will not allow him, the son of a king, to get to the throne at the right time. He wanted it now. He wanted it now. And self would not allow him to even live to see the dream that he had that's the captivity we're talking about today and the Lord will give us freedom I said the Lord will give us freedom let me go one by one now freedom of Zion's sons from captivity. I told you number one, the taskmasters. We're looking at Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 11. In Exodus chapter 1, reading from verse 11, it says, Therefore, they did search over them, taskmasters, to afflict them with their bodies and build for Pharaoh treasures, treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Look at verse 12. It says in verse 12, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Captivity will not stop you. Taskmasters will not stop you. At the, at they put a task on you and they put a burden on you and they say this one you'll never get out of it today you are getting out of that in Jesus name and they were grieved before the children of Israel then he tells us in verse 13 it says and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor verse 14 tells us and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them to serve with rigor. Check up your life. Is there any taskmaster over your life? that you want to fly you want to run you want to go over that mountain and there is a taskmaster that pecks you down and it says you are not going anywhere that's captivity already and today the lord will deliver you in jesus name 
Look at Matthew chapter 18, verse 34. I'm talking now about the tormentors. You know, there are people that just torment your life. I remember when I was very young, very, very young in the primary school, and my daddy put me with some people, men, bachelors, that uh, were supposed to be my guardian, and they were to help and to encourage me, make sure I studied my books and all that. I'm telling you, they tormented me. And even the people around, they knew that this boy was going through torment, but God delivered me. I said, God delivered me. God has come to deliver you. Look at Matthew chapter 18, verse 34. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors, to the tormentors, that he should pay all that was due unto him. You know, in our lives, uh, when some things happened, this man in particular, in this parable, he was forgiven by the master. And then there was another person that owed him just a hundred pence, a little fraction of what he had been forgiven. And then he held him by the throat and said, pay me that which you owed me. He wanted to be a tormentor. And when his Lord heard, he delivered him to the tormentors. There are people that have been left alone. You want to take care of yourself. You don't want to obey my word. You want to be disobedient. You want to torment other people. And then they are delivered into the hands of tormentors. And their trainers and their teachers and their shepherds and their pastors. Of course, those trainers and those shepherds and those pastors who torment other people, they're not born again. The people who tormented me when I was in the primary school and they thought I would not even finish primary school, they were not born again and the, and the leaders and the masters the mechanic and the whoever the traders they are and they're tormenting the people who are under them they are not born again. They may claim to be Christians. If they are tormentors, they are not children of God. Mentor them. Don't torment them. His Lord was wrath with him and delivered him to the tormentors till he should all that was due unto him. I spoke about the thorns in the flesh. Thorns in the flesh that become something that keeps you in captivity. And that's what, why the Lord has brought us today. Every thorn in your flesh and every pain in your neck, deliverance today. I said deliverance today. Look at Numbers chapter 33, and I'm reading from verse 55. Numbers chapter 33, and we're reading from verse 55. It says, but if he will not drive out the inhabitants of the land, who, from whom, from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye leave, which ye let remain of them, shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and shall what shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. They were delivered out of Egypt, and they went to the land of Canaan. And the Lord told them, The end that come for those Canaanites, wipe them out, take them away from there. And he refused to do that. And eventually, those people become thorns in their flesh. And eventually, ten tribes went to captivity. And Judah, two tribes went to captivity. And they were in captivity again. And look at uh, what it does. It can do that to a nation. can do that to a family. And can do that to an individual. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we're reading from verse 7, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, a thorn in the flesh to slow him down, to peg him down, to imprison him, and to make him not seen a personal wound that he will not have time to preach the gospel. It said, it was given to me a son in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, the messenger of Satan, the taskmasters, messengers of Satan. 
and the thorn in the flesh messenger of Satan and the tormentous messengers of Satan, it says to buffet me lest I should be exalted above measure. You know the story? He went to the Lord and said, Lord, deliver me from this. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you. Today, the grace of God will flow into your life. Captivity will be cancelled out of your life in Jesus' name. Now, there is so you mentioned Satan here. Satan sent this one to buffet me. Another, another cause of captivity is Satan himself. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 25. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25, it says, In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if for adventure, the Lord will give them repentance and to the acknowledgement of the truth. Look at verse 26. Who and they, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. The devil who has taken them captive at his will they cannot do the will of god they cannot do even their own will they have to do the will of the devil the will of satan he has taken them captive sometimes the captivity is sickness and the sickness is just there and the person is bogged down what am i going to do he cannot get out of the house is there incarcerated by the by the sickness but the lord today has come to deliver you let me hear what has amen uh, uh, look at uh, Luke chapter Luke chapter 13 uh, I'm reading from verse 11 in Luke chapter 13 reading from verse 11 it says and behold there was a certain woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years think about that a spirit of infirmity 18 years was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself and then in verse 12 we're told that when jesus saw her the lord has seen you today deliverance has come today when jesus saw her he called he called her to him and said unto her woman put your name there woman i said put your name there shout it brother sister man woman thou art loosed from thine infirmity and then in verse 13 in verse 13 and he laid the signs on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified god and then in verse 14 and the and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that jesus had healed on the on the sabbath day and said unto the people there are six days in which men ought to walk in them therefore come and be healed and not on the sabbath day in verse 15 and uh, verse 15 and the lord uh, then answered him and said thou hypocrite at thou doth not each of you uh, on the sabbath they lose his horse and his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering. Look at verse 16 now. It says, Ought not this woman, ought not this brother, this sister, ought not this boy, this girl, ought not this man or this woman, ought, they, ought not this person be being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound? That's captivity. That's captivity. You know, when you go to people that have knowledge of medicine and all that, they might call it, um, you know, spinal disorder, or they might call it, uh, you know, spinal bondage or, or damage. Whatever they call it, Jesus said, whom Satan has bound. Bondage. These 18 years be loose from this bound on the Sabbath day, and this is a glorious day for your deliverance. I said a glorious day for God setting you free. He will do it in Jesus' name. 
Acts of the Apostle chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How Jesus, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And that Jesus is here today. With two or three are gathered in my name out there, I'll be in the midst of them. I didn't hear your amen. And then you say, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did then is still going to do today. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about is coming to where you are doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. All those people he healed anywhere, everywhere, they were people under the captivity of the devil. They were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The captivity will be caused by tax masters. The captivity may be caused by tormentors. The captivity may be caused by uh, the thorn in the flesh. The captivity may be caused by Satan. It may be caused by sickness. The captivity may be the captivity of sin. In Romans chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 15. Romans chapter 7, we're looking at verse 15. It says, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. For what I hate, that I do. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Then verse 17 says, now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Then in verse 18, it says, For I know that in me, that he is in my flesh, dwelleth no good sin. For to will is present with me, but to perform that which is good, I find not. Verse 19, it says, For the good that I would, I do not, and the evil that I would not, that I do. Verse 20, he then tells us, now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. He said, that's the taskmaster. He said, that's the one that holds me in bondage. The sin that dwells in me. And then verse 23, it says, So wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I pray that the fool who comes to deliver, who comes to set us free, it will deliver you today in Jesus' name. Task master, or it is the tormentor, it is the thorn in the flesh, or it is Satan, or it is sickness, or it is sin, or it is self. Look at First Corinthians chapter nine, verse twenty-seven. In First Corinthians chapter nine, verse twenty-seven, it tells us, "But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection." It said, "Self." could give me self-imprisonment and could just bind me down there, hold me down there, keep me down there. Paul the Apostle recognized that with all those people, with all those principles, with all those messengers of Satan, he could come into captivity. And so he said, this last one living with me all the time, that's myself. He said, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I pray to others, I myself shall be a cast away. This is why Christ Christ came to deliver us and set us free from every kind of bondage. I didn't hear your amen. And from every kind of captivity, the Lord has come to set you free. You'll be free. I said you'll be free. Look at John chapter 8, John chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 36. It says, if the Son Therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. You'll be free and you'll be free indeed. 
100% from every form of captivity. You're going to be free in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 2. In Romans chapter 8, we're looking at verse 2. It says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Has made me free has made me free from the law of sin and death. Christ Jesus has the power, the power to forgive and the power to destroy your enemy who will hold you down and keep you in captivity. Christ Jesus has the power, the power of God he wills and then you worship and you adore. As you come to the Lord today and you come to Christ afresh, I know you are saved, come to him again. I know you are sanctified, come to him again. I know you are baptized and the Holy Ghost come to him again so that every bondage of the devil, every captivity of the devil, every imprisonment of the devil today, a new kind of freedom, a new kind of release, and a new kind of deliverance will come to every one of us in Jesus' name. He tells us in Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives, to preach deliverance to the captives, to provide and to proclaim deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. You are free. The Son has come, the Son of God, and the Spirit of God abides on him. Every chain, every yoke in your life, by the anointing, he will break in Jesus' name. The freedom of Zion's sons from captivity. Let's come to point number two now. Point number two, the faithfulness of zealous saints for his commission. Now, he has commissioned us and he has told us what to do and he has given us the promise that, lo, I am with you always. How often will God be with you? How often will Christ be with you? How often will the Redeemer, the Libra be with you? I am with you always, even to the end of the world, to the end of the age. Let's look at Psalm 132. Psalm 132, I'm reading from verse 9. In Psalm 132, reading from verse 9, let, the, let thy priest be closed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. Let the saints of God shout for joy. And then in verse 16, look at verse 16, it says, I will also close a priest for salvation and her saints shall shout for joy. We come into the kingdom and we come into Zion. And when we come into Zion, he does something for us. He delivers us from every evil thing and from sin and because he does that he converts us and he makes us sins he redeems us from all iniquity look at Psalm 130 Psalm 130 and I'm reading from verse 7 and verse 8 Psalm 130 we're looking at verse 7 and looking at verse 8 let Israel hope in the Lord for with the Lord there is mercy and with him plenteous redemption, abundant redemption, and copious redemption. He has redemption, and his redemption plan covers every situation of everyone. His redemption plan covers you today. I said his redemption plan covers you today. And look at what he will do. Look at verse 8. And he shall redeem Israel from all 
his iniquities. Underline that word all. He shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. And when he takes iniquity out of us, sin out of us, all the consequences of sin, he'll wipe everything away in my life. I said in my life, he takes iniquity away and then he wipes away all the consequences of iniquity. Look at this now. He shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Maybe you are saying uh, that's for Israel, but look at me. I'm not an Israelite. I'm a Gentile. I'm an African. I'm an American. Or I am, you know, Pakistani. I am not an Israelite. Look at Titus chapter 2. In Titus chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 13. Titus chapter 2, when looking at verse 13, it says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. There's no full stop there. Look at verse 14 now. Who gave himself for us. You know, we're ready about Israel. He will redeem Israel from all its iniquity. We're reading about ourselves now, about you, about me, about everyone that will come to the Lord today and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. It will happen. I said it will happen. Maybe you may battling with the, you know, depravity and the inward sin and the root of sin all alone by yourself. I have problem with this. I have problem with this. It's because you are struggling. It's because you are trying to deliver yourself from the captivity of the inbred sin, of the root of sin, of the nature of sin. But today you just come to Jesus, our Redeemer, our Deliverer. And the one who died for us on the cross of Calvary to take away even the power of that inbred sin and as a surrender to him today and you believe on him, he will redeem you from all iniquity. It will purify you unto himself, a peculiar believer, zealous of good works in Jesus' name. Look at that word, zealous, 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 underline that. You know, maybe you are wondering, when you were a younger believer, the way you would do evangelism, you didn't need any push, you didn't need uh, any pull, you just rise up. There was something inside you, it was like a propelling engine, and you could not sit down, you just take your food and take your meal, and then you are out again to go to church. Nobody dragged you, nobody pulled you. You just said, I must be in the house of the Lord today. You had a prayer partner, and then if the prayer partner is getting slow, you are there already. Are we not going to pray together today? You were zealous of good, of good works, but now it's like uh, the fire is gone down. The zeal is gone down and the, you know, the aspiration and the desire, the vision, everything is gone down. Even though you still do a lot, but it's not with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. You're weak inside, you're weak outside, your facial expression is weak and there's no cheerfulness, no happiness, joy, no joy of serving the Lord. But the Lord will touch you again today. That fire will come back. That zeal will come back and the fervency will come back in Jesus' name. If it is uh, one Jezebel somewhere that threatened you and therefore now you are, you are afraid to go out or it is pandemic that is, uh, you know, uh, staring at you on your face and then you are afraid to go out and the fire is down, the zeal is down, the excitement is down and the spirit of evangelism is down today. God will rekindle that fire. 
and God will kindle that seal. You just come to the Lord. Jesus is the one we read about. The seal of the Lord has consumed me. And you say, oh Lord, transfer that seal you had, that fervency you had, transfer it unto me, and that zeal will come back to you in Jesus' name. He gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. We're looking at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 1. It says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. And then in verse 2, it says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. God is looking for faithful people and is going around, is checking up. He checks up the temperature of your heart. He checks up the level of your zeal. He checks up the readiness to commit yourself and do everything he has called you to do. And he wants to find out the gauge and the level and the measure of your faithfulness. I pray he will find you faithful. I said he will find you faithful. Faithful to the calling of the Lord upon your life. Faithful to the preaching of the gospel in your life. And faithful to the sacrificial life you ought to live for the glory of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. He'll find me faithful. I said he'll find me faithful. You know, there are times somebody has been faithful in little things and in big things and it's going on other people are cutting corners other people are cheating other people are lying other people are deceiving other people are changing accounts and he said no i will not no i will not and one day the devil comes and he says now you've been so strange as if you know you are the only holy holy person in the land after all that person that changed that thing a little you also is a christian that other person that even told a little lie and modified something he also is even a member of deep and life is the same church you are going and why are you so strict like this and then you cheat a little and then you tell your own lie a little and then you deceive a little and you are not faithful to what you know in your conscience you are not faithful to what you know in your life you are not faithful to the decision and the covenant you made before God to your wife and you're not totally faithful transparently faithful 100% faithful perfectly faithful to your husband and you know in your heart if Christ were to come now you'll not be found faithful who knows when the Lord will come if you've been walking straight you've been walking perfectly and you've been doing the will of God and you have been straight and faithful it may be be at that time when you let down a little, when you say, I don't want to be odd, I don't want to be the odd man, the odd woman out, they, they look at me as if I'm queer, as if I'm not normal, because I'm not cheating like them. It may be that day you let down, the Lord will come and then he will not find you faithful. And all the other things you've done that you are faithful in the past, everything goes down the drain because he meets you. An unfaithful man, an unfaithful woman, I pray the grace to abide and the grace to remain faithful. The Lord will give to every one of us in Jesus' name because it is required of a man, it is required of a minister, it is required of a Christian that the person be found faithful. He'll find you faithful in Jesus' name. In Colossians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 17. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, 
this faithfulness whatsoever ye do at home whatsoever ye do behind closed doors whatsoever ye do when you're all alone by yourself whatsoever ye do in the office whatsoever ye do on the accounts whatsoever ye do in word or in deed in your utterance on in or your action do all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. And then it says in verse 23, in verse 23, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. Don't do it half-heartedly. Don't do it as if, you know, somebody is holding a club. Uh, you know, if you don't do that, I'll whack you. I'll break your head. And then with fear, fear of man, you hurry up and then you are doing, but your heart is not there. I'd rather be in another place. I'd rather be doing another thing now. My interest is not here and my heart is not here. But they will complain and they will do something against to me if I don't do it. No, don't do it like that. If we're like that, we're not faithful. But whatsoever ye do, uh, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. When we're unhappy with men, uh, we say, okay, I will serve the Lord, but this is the way I will do it. Because you are not happy with them, you are disappointed in them. But when you forget men, when you forget taskmasters, when you forget tormentors, when you forget the, the one buffeting you, like, uh, you know, the thorn in the flesh, when you forget even Satan and evil spirit that want to hold you in captivity and you're looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of your faith and the redeemer and the one who has commissioned you to do what you are doing then actually with all your heart with all your soul you do it as unto the Lord and not unto men in verse 24 it tells us knowing that of the Lord he shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ I pray you will not lose your reward I will not lose my reward and whatever God wants you to do a little thing do it and even go the extra mile it is in going the extra mile and you're saying Lord I've done your will I've obeyed your word I've carried that out what else do you want me to do I'm still available it is that attitude that God will look at and it will bless you abundantly beyond your expectation in Jesus name knowing that of the Lord he shall receive the reward which he has uh, for, uh, uh, sorry verse 24 it says knowing in verse 24 that of the Lord he shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Jesus everything you are doing in the private I'm doing this as unto the Lord you're giving a cup of cold water I'm giving this as if Jesus also in front of me and I'm giving this cold uh, water to him and you are you know helping somebody you are visiting somebody and you are doing a kind of a kind a kind word to somebody giving it to somebody I'm giving this unto Jesus my Lord for as much as he have done it to the least of these my brethren he have done it unto me and for as much as he have not done it to the least of the of one of these my brethren then you have not done it unto me and then in verse 25 it now tells us but he that doeth wrong saying I'm doing the wrong to you know so and so he doesn't have power he doesn't have authority to fight back or to do anything and therefore I'll kick him here I'll rubbish him here I'll do this there he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done because the Lord will say as you have done it to him one of the least of my brethren you have done it unto me uh, you know I was hungry you didn't give me food I was naked you gave me any any clothing I was sick you did not visit me I was in prison you didn't visit me when did you see Lord you hungry and naked and 
and sick and in prison and did not visit you because you have not done it to one of the least of these my brethren you have not done it unto me and then you'll tell them on the left hand side go to the left hand side where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth a place prepared for the devil and his angels I pray you will not be there I pray I will not be there but he that doeth wrong, he that forgets, you know, uh, when you remember your salvation, you are keeping your salvation every moment and every time in the day and in the night. You'll never forget, I'm saved as a child of God. This is the way I ought to live. I'm tired, but I'm saved. I'm weary, but I'm saved. I'm sweating, but I'm saved. I'm opposed, but I'm saved. I'm persecuted, but I'm saved. I'm disappointed, but I'm saved. And the salvation is uppermost in your heart. You will not do wrong. You will not allow the pressure or the weakness or the weariness or anything to make you sin. You will not sin in Jesus' name. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done. And there is no respecter of, there is no respect of persons the lord keep you faithful the lord keep me faithful and you will not be unfaithful when you are going through the last mile of the way in jesus name in revelation chapter 2 verse 10 revelation chapter 2 we're looking at verse 10 it says fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer that's why people become unfaithful. They are afraid what they will suffer. They are afraid the reaction of the world to them. They are afraid the attitude of the attitude and the disposition of persecutors over their lives. They do not realize that the suffering here is nothing. The persecution here is nothing. When people get to the other side, if God finds them unfaithful in their lives because of the fear of man and they get to the other side, what they will go through, what they will suffer will be a thousand times, a million times, a trillion times what they could have suffered here on earth. And when you realize the Lord will moderate everything, he will not allow any temptation, any trial, any pressure to come upon you more than you can bear. And then they will make a way of escape for you to escape. You didn't see proper amen. You will escape every temptation and trial in Jesus' name. So, Herod, don't fear him. Nebuchadnezzar, don't fear him. But he has a furnace and he can throw me into the fire. And fire is not friendly with the body of a man. Don't worry about that. When you pass through the waters, you'll not be drowned. And when you pass through fire, it will not burn you. And Shagram, Meshach, and Abednego has given us that example. They said, oh, king, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from you and from your fire. And Nebuchadnezzar got angry and furious. You know, there are people, they fear the anger of human beings. And they fear the fury of human beings. They say, if I say that, if I preach that, if I reach that, if I go that direction, Nebuchadnezzar will be furious and they are afraid. He was angry and he commanded the great men of his kingdom that they should take a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the furnace. And the fire, the flame was so serious that even those people that threw them, the flame that came out slew them and they died. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they fell down and the rope and the bondage and the thing that tied them burnt up, their, their cords were burnt up. All the things that Nebuchadnezzar is trying to use to clamp you down and hold you down, everything will burn up. 
and then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those are my brothers. And then they rose up, and then they were walking. And then Nebuchadnezzar said, I have to teach those people lesson. Next time, no person will say no when I say, bow down. They have to bow down. And then he looked and peeped into the phone. He said, what, what do I see? He said, men, please tell me, did not we cast three men into the furnace? And then I see four men walking in, and the appearance of the fourth one is like the Son of God. He has not changed Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will be with you. Where are you? I said it will be with you. That fire will not burn you. So don't be afraid of Nebuchadnezzar. And some people are afraid of Pharaoh. And here is Pharaoh. He said, okay, you can go eventually. And then after they went and they were going, here was the Red Sea before them. And when they looked back, they saw Pharaoh and the chariots of Egypt, and they cried, what are we going to do? God will make a way where there is no way. In your life, God will make a way where there is no way. They're coming with chariots. Don't look at their chariots. They're coming with all the power of Egypt gathered together. Don't look at them. Be at rest. These Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever in Jesus' name. And so Moses 